Outstandenzo.com. I believe that the freedom of speech is a universal international right that all opinions shall be tolerated regardless of agreeable or disagreeable. I believe in the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, the freedom of expression, the freedom of religion, not from it, the freedom of the press, the right of the people to peaceably assemble, be it physically or spiritually or digitally or virtually. I believe in the separation of church and state and and corporation, I believe that truth is non-binary and can be objective, subjective, normative, or complex. There are no eternal facts. There are no absolute truths except the word of God. For us creators and for our content, great thinkers that philosophize and our founding fathers de- debated the dangers of cancellation and censorship for centuries. No individual shall be indemnified of criticism or mockery, for there is honesty and jest. I pledge that the ideas I share of my own and are not the expressed opinions of any violent criminal organizations. The only group I represent is the human race, and I reserve the right to interview any of my counterparts without fear, threat, or intimidation with their opinions being their own my opinions being my own for association is not those equal shared beliefs i pledge to perform in a professional dignified manner and not bully harass or slander my fellow human creatures to refrain from hate anger sedition vulgarity harassment pornography cautioning that satire and sarcasm can at times be misinterpreted as such i believe in the counter speech doctrine that the remedy to negative harmful speech is more positive helpful speech not enforced silence that no person shall be denied access to social media which is the marketplace of ideas and today town square that section 230 privatizes communism legalizes libel and stalking and that content creators who have broken community guidelines in the past deserve retribution because we're all constituents of the human party and humans are fallible baby amen Outstanding. Pow. and uh Settle, settle in uh, today Bad. on Bad. our Bad. new Bad. Fat Enzo Bad. show Bad. entitled Bad. Jews Bad. Have Been Bad. Eating Bad. in Flight for 3,000 Years. Bad. I know it sounds a little crazy when you first Bad. read that, but it's, I promise it's going to tie in today's uh, Old Testament reading where we discuss, you know, we're going further down the uh, down, you know, sequential order of the story with Moses. And Moses uh, speaking at the burning bush, speaking to God. And um, he told them he told him to go out and tell tell his people I am right. He he doesn't use contractions. God has divine uh, grammar, right? So anyway, now we're at this. What's what's going to happen with the storyline, huh? Today we also have uh, Edward Sazal on. He's a host of Crosstalk podcast, a Christian based podcast. I think it's out of Vero Beach, but I'm not quite sure. He does a lot of stuff. He uh, he produces podcasts, produces TV, radio, media in general. And uh, he has a show on Cozy TV as well, where he does a, a Bible show in the morning. And uh, he's a great guy. I really appreciate him uh, sitting in on this and being part of the show today. We're also going to go over the saint of the day and do the Latin of the day. And it's Friday, July 21st in the year of our Lord, 2023. Good day, do followers. This is your based Catholic liturgy program. It's the Holy Ghost daily dose of digital divinity. And if you don't know, now you know the Fat Enzo Show is Latin for podcast. Today we'll cover the good news from the book and the bad news of the world. And now, your host, a former altar boy who couldn't get molested in the basement of a rectory, Robert Robert. Vincent. Vincent. Picharillo. I could not get molested in the basement of a rectory. I tried too. I wore those suggestive clothes, like, you know, Catholic school uniforms and such. Didn't work, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I got Edward Zoll. How do I pronounce your name, sir? Zoll. Zoll? Zoll? Yeah. Edward Zoll's on. Yes. Just forget the S. It's just forget Edward the Zoll. Just Good forget to be with the you, Bobby. S. Thank I got you, a chance to, to hang out with you a little bit. He was very tired, very, very <sighs> sleepy on yes. Sunday evening. <laughs> yes, I was. I went down to the uh, Nick Fuentes um, rally, Fuentes too, and, and uh, our mutual friend there, our, our liberal friend, isn't that crazy? Patty from Boston. That, the thing, like, he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, if you, if you hang out with right-wing people, you talk about right-wing things, and you are generally associated with right-wing people. You're right wing. I don't care if you keep saying, I'm liberal, I'm liberal, I'm liberal. I'm like, hey, bro, you quack, you walk, you speak like a duck. 
You're one of us. <laughs> I agree. I agree. No, but he's no. Really, if you go down um, the line of of our our issues and our views, it's polar opposite. It's just so funny. He's like a natural contrarian. He wants yeah. to be conservative. He was raised traditionally, but he goes against the grain. That's the kind of thing, I you know. Him. You know, I've, I've been I've been uh, digital and remote friends with him for boy, maybe five years. I mean, we. I, he responded to something I said a long time ago. And I just started a conversation with him. And I've appreciated my friendship with him. You know, we've prayed for each other. Well, he, he doesn't, he's not religious per se, but he, you know, he did send his, his good tidings. And, and of course, uh, you know, he, he was there to talk uh, at times when I've gone, I was gone through, going through tough things in my life. And he, you know, he, of course, had good, uh, what, what are thoughts? You know, I don't want to be insulting. It was like, he wasn't praying for my wife per se, but he had good thoughts, you know, and then I do appreciate him. He also, he, he's very quick to call out, uh, you know, illogical, biases and things like that it has helped me uh, as uh my time as a reporter bobby uh you know it, it's good to have those kind of people in your life because they they keep you accountable right mm. plus he's kind of interesting you know he's an interesting fella i like he him. he really is I, I i love patty from boston man he did and, and it's good to have that different perspective because at least you know he you know he went he was at an uh an antifa member's house the day before he was staying in mine it's crazy I mean, the spec, the spectrum of this person, you know, he was, uh, yeah. but not, not uh, I don't think he's like a mole or anything crazy or anything like that. <laughs> see, see, I wasn't going to say anything like this. Were you getting because scared about that for a second? For a guy like that, you know, he starts getting a reputation as like a fed, but I, yeah, I mean, look, the Holy Spirit's kind of guided me in my relationship with old Patty. And I just think he's, he's just a contrarian. I think he hangs out with a lot of different people. I, I could tell you this. I, I I'm, I'm definitely a guy who looks for little things that kind of, a little nuggets, which will point you toward like, okay, the truth in the situation. A mole would not have uh, done what he's done uh, for a certain uh, J6 victim. All right. And mm. that's what I'll say. I'll say that that, that kind of showed me that he's the real deal. And I'm not, I'm not the guy to, to just accuse everyone of being a fed or a mole. I think that in itself uh, is like a, it's a self replicating cycle of, uh, of discord and, mm. and, and mistrust among people. I'm not going to do that unless there's evidence. Like if it comes out in court that you're a federal informant or that you are paid by the federal government to mess up my, uh, my freedoms and uh, to try to persecute me as a Christian, then yeah, okay, we're not going to, we're not going to be buddies. <laughs> but I don't think that's the case with Patty. Yes. And it's also, yeah, we don't want to be causing paranoia to ourselves. It's not right. a good way to live. And we've got to stay in the Holy Spirit. You brought that up, and that was a great... I love the fact that you just brought that up about the Holy Spirit. And of course, guys, Edward Zoll, let me give him a real introduction here, host Cross Talk News. It says, Christian futurist, Christ is king. Producer, it died suddenly. So he also hosts a... a, a, a well. Well, let me uh, let me bring up crosstalk news first. Crosstalk. So, this is all about his podcast. Uh, to boldly go where no new show has gone before, we've grown up watching our mainstream media become more dishonest, more d divisive, and more driven by ad revenue and liberal bias than ever before. As Christians, as news reporters, as members of the millennial generation, we think there is a better way. So, join us weekly on Crosstalk News. We'll give you the news, the hard facts, the truth as we see it, and beyond that, the hope that Christ still sees in all of us. Yeah, and you guys do that. Um, is that weekly? Yes, Tuesdays it's every Monday. Every Monday, Monday right? Peter's Network at eight p.m. Uh, Eastern. We air, and uh, my my co-hosts are uh, Lauren Witzke. Uh, she ran for Senate uh, in Delaware. It was stolen from her. Can I say that? Okay, <laughs> and. Uh, Patrick Cowley. Patrick Cowley. He's a, a new host we have on with us. And we're in like a new studio. We just built it. We, we got a nice little family group down here, Bobby. And uh, we, we work together to build a physical set that looks kind of cool. I'm joining you from our green screen set. The green screen was not king. So you get the manila background. I, I didn't have a chance to put up this uh, beautiful painting we have that has palm trees. Is <laughs> what we use when the, the thing won't key. But anyway, yes, it's every, uh, every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then as you mentioned, the Bible study is at 7.15 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday. On Fridays, uh, my co-host, uh, Even More Based, uh, he's, he's a musician. He's awesome. He does live hymns and stuff. Uh, he takes it on Friday, but he's, uh, he, he writes shotgun with me Monday through Thursday. And right now, we're going through the book of Luke. We do one chapter of the New Testament, 
and one chapter of the Old Testament. So we're in Psalms and uh, Luke. It's been good. Uh, Bobby, as, as you kind of know with the Holy Spirit, I... I believe I'm nothing without Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I believe that uh, he's the driving force in my life. And it's a blessing for, you know, I, I, I give all credit to him that I, he gives me the breath to wake up every day to do this Bible study and to run my organization and, and to host Crosstalk News and to talk to fellows like you. You do a great job. You are unafraid to help people who have essentially been shunned and censored by the world. And I appreciate you for that. What do you mean? That's me. Yeah, I mean, you I was- too. Me I too. have been. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm gonna wear the back. So you tell me a little. I'm an OG. I'm an OG of that. I'm on my third YouTube channel, my second Rumble. You know, um, you talk about talk about. Listen, I, up until the other day, when um, when everybody realized that Rumble does cancel people and stuff, I was the only person that I knew that has had his uh, his Rumble channel banned, canceled, is whatever. That it true? Is. What what happened to you? Well, I uh, I was in. See, okay, so I, I'm a I'm what you call a gonzo journalist. I love Hunter S. Thompson. I have a Hunter S. Thompson tattoo. Okay. I was on a reality show, uh, America's Worst Tattoos, TLC on TLC. Um I brought my podcasting equipment and I talked the tattoo artist who was giving me the cover up and doing a podcast with me while I was getting my cover up. That was in 2013. I was an early adopter. To podcasting. I've been doing this for a long time. Before this, I worked at a regular radio station in Tampa, WMNF radio. And then I stole the um the equipment they, they gave us. I mean, I'm it's, I'm sorry for saying it's true. I mean, I, I guess I'm admitting I'm admitting theft. I I uh I did do it. I, I it was a long time ago. I'm, I apologize for it. Eventually I want to give the that radio station like a Are large amount of equipment? money. No, this is Bobby. no the the field you know the field recorder? <laughs> You know the field recorder they teach you how to how to use. I was doing that field recording that back then and making fake little podcasts like a fake news story, uh, covering like a birthday party and putting it all together and sending the MP3 to my friends. That was back pre pre Joe Rogan. I was doing that stuff. You so I've always I'd love to hear. A, a, I've always a liked. There's oh there's, there's I have stuff back. I have stuff. I I interviewed that guy. Um, you know the black gentleman who joined the KKK, basically or whatever. Are you talking who, about Dave Chappelle? Rogan's had him on. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Not the not the character that he played. But no, there's a real. There was a there was this black guy who who basically like made friends with all these KKK members, and he's been on Rogan. I interviewed that guy like 15 years ago. Did he wear he a black hood? Coming through Tampa, because um, he tried to bring them to the hood. He just what became. Kind of he he he. Uh, struck up a friendship with like a grand wizard oh, and then sick. eventually like he was it, was it was actually he has a really cool if, story if he He's, joins the group forgot does the guy's he do name. black magic then or is forgot, it like i forgot the guy's name but that but anyway listen I, and then i joined the proud boys i was the first uh proud boy uh oh, in palm beach interesting and i and i and i uh first the first meetup i met enrique tario Hmm. And yeah, he's, uh, uh, he's an interesting figure. That was literally the first. Okay. That was literally the first meeting that I I had a physical meeting with Proud Boys. I met up with Enrique Tario, and then we became close friends. And then he became our our local chapter president. We were all just South Florida, from West Palm, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami, basically. And then um, he then you know if you're following along with the story and you're on the right side of news and keeping your eye to the pavement right uh at some point gavin mcginnis stepped down and enrique became our cha uh, chairman and so i was close friends with him while he became the chairman and then i became friends with roger stone i started making shirts for roger stone the did nothing wrong shirts i do all those did nothing wrong shirts he was a he was arrested you, in one of the shirts we made so that that picture of him you know with his hands behind his back that's a shirt I made for him. And anyway, long story short is I was very worldly and I went to, you know, I was there at J6. I was president of J6 and stuff like that. I um, was very, very worldly. And now because all these like tragedies happened to me in 2021, my grandfather, my mother and my brother, my only sibling all died in 2021. Oh, man, all right. Of all related to like that COVID, not, not, COVID specifically, some people, yes. Some people, it was really just like the hospital um, protocols. But but uh, I had three deaths, okay? All three generations of my family. And I'm basically, I don't have any kids and I'm not married. So I'm by myself in life. And and uh, 
because I was a cradle Catholic and I was sent to Catholic school my whole life and I hated Catholicism really. I mean, well, I hated going to Catholic school. I was, I wanted to go to public school. I just went against it. I was an altar boy and everything. But, uh, later on I rediscovered it. I started going to mass daily. I've been going to mass daily probably for a year and a half now. And it's, it's giving me great peace. I just came to ma from mass today. I went, to, I go to mass every single day, basically. And what was the homily today? Oh, uh, we're going to go over it. I talk about, you know, what I, what I learned in mass. Uh, the homily was, I'll tell you what the homily was yesterday. Cause I actually, this will give me an opportunity to, to, cause I wanted to crowbar this any anyway. He said very, something very interesting. We had a priest, um, that's from Boston. Does he, he said, have the Patty accent? yeah, he said, God gave us his cell phone number. Um, because every, you know, a lot of people will accuse Catholics of like praying to saints and stuff. And that's true. You know, I'm not going to say we don't pray to Mary. We do pray to Mary, uh, meditation, veneration, you know, that's a form of worship prayer. It's a form of worship. You could say we worship Mary, whatever. Fine. So, but we all, everything we do is really through Christ, our Lord, T C O L through, through Christ, our Lord. And, um, so Jesus gave us his basically he said, God gave us his cell phone number. It's Jesus. You call upon Jesus, you get God, right? He is God. I know it's very difficult to understand, but he's also an, an intercessor to God. He was all man. He was all God. Right. And Same then, the right um, of the father. I just made a joke to the, to the priest on my way out. He said, he goes, how'd you like that? I go, yeah. And Jesus gave his beeper number to us, which is his blessed mother, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Okay. Right. I'm definitely I'm definitely a Mary respecter, so maybe we shouldn't call her a beeper. But you know that's that's good. It actually kind of works. It kind of works. I, I just went over the chapter uh, in the book of Luke um, where Christ uh, is. You know the story is being shared about Mary and her decision uh, to to be submitted to Gabriel and uh, the Lord's plan. Where and hail she, Mary she comes really from? Didn't ask any questions. Like seriously, like she was like, yeah, oh, okay, mm -hmm. this seems a little wild. She's never been with a man. Jesus Christ is her firstborn and only child. And she went, she went with it. The faith that Mary showed is a testament, not just to all women, but all of mankind. And a lot of people, there's been, I, I don't know if, I think it is new, Bobby. I think this, um, like Mary disrespectors, right? This is, a, is a, a new phenomena, maybe the last hundred years, really probably since yeah, I've been on the internet, I've seen a lot more of it. And, and I would say this, how are you going to diss Jesus's mom? Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I know what I'm gonna feel like if you diss my mom. My, you diss my mom, you know. Not I bring Christian that up. Ed might come out. It that, that 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 one is dead. I'm dead to that guy. But uh, you're gonna push me. What do you think Jesus thinks about that? Jesus doesn't want you dissing his mom. It's it's the mother of Jesus Christ and uh, her and Joseph. Man, they did a great job. They raised Jesus Christ. Uh, he was always God. Uh, he was here on earth. And even at what, 12 years old, he was teaching in the temple. I mean, Jesus is amazing. I love Jesus Christ and I love his mother. Yeah. And you can't, you cannot call a Catholic man a misogynist. You could see him with 10 kids, right? Don't call him a misogynist. He prays to a woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's a good point. That's a good point, Bob. Yeah. All yeah. right. Let's get into the readings of the day. There's so much to talk to you about. Let's get, all right. Let's do one worldly thing. I saw this on your Twitter. You shared this with the German abbot. Check this out. Enzo.com. Everyone from any religion, but it's really big and it's inappropriate for this place. Okay? That's not a fish place. You need to respect the place. Can you please put it inside? Okay, this is I'm very harsh. It's very religion. harsh. No, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not respecting Can you religion. please stop taking pictures? You're, you're not respecting. Thank you. You're hindering me from my human right to... Uh, no, this is not provocation. I'm an abbot. This it's is my dress. This is how I I'm dressed. I told you to do something with your dress code. I told you to do something with your cross. The cross is part of my dress code. I'm a, I'm a Roman Catholic abbot. This is how I dress. So you want from me that I um, am not dressed as my faith tells me uh, how I should dress. Yeah, this is really outstanding. Pow! Very interesting, right? He is um, he's in Israel, I believe. Yes, that was by the Western Wall. 
German yeah, Abbot German forced Abbot to remove his, his faith cross. Out. Bobby, that's trying to live his faith out. And uh, there's several things with this. Uh, this is a story, uh, this, this spectrum uh, of topic has been something I've been on since 2018. Uh, I uh, traveled to Bethlehem. It's the only time I've ever, I've ever been to Israel. I've been taking the pilgrimages as some take, uh, such uh, as the TPUSA or uh, some freshman congressman. But uh, I've, been, I've been to Israel once, and I went to a conference called Christ at the Checkpoint. And what it was, it was a conference uh, that uh, looked at the persecution of Christians who live in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, and uh, also the persecution of the Palestinians. Now, this is a tough topic because I, I, don't, I don't endorse everything that the Palestinian uh, the, P the PLO that, that, that they do and that they're involved in, and I certainly don't uh, appreciate the violence. I, I don't like any of that. Do I understand the geopolitical nature of it? Yes. And do I also condemn the bombs from the Palestinians? Yes, but I also condemn the shooting of the Palestinian kids and in their knees and their heads and all kinds of things. Uh, I've been covering that story for quite some time. In respect to this, uh, so I think of two examples. There were, well, a couple of years ago, a night, Michael Brown, he's a Christian Zionist. Uh, he went over to Israel. He was actually at the conference I was at in 2018. He was spat on by a bunch of uh, Chabad uh, Lubavitch uh, supporters. You know, they're, they're kind of like uh, a sect of Judaism. I wouldn't call them Orthodox Jews, but they are definitely Talmudic Jews. Mm. And uh, they spat on him and tried to get him arrested. And actually, it is a crime in Israel to share uh, our faith as Christians with children. Because it's seen as stealing the children away, uh, stealing their birthright, stealing their, their ethnic identity. Because uh, thanks to the Jews that currently occupy uh, Gaza and uh, the West Bank and Jerusalem itself uh, since the Six-Day War, uh, thanks to uh, them, uh, there's a tie now between religion and ethnicity. Race, ethnicity, uh, and religion for Jews, it's all one. And it, it has created this big problem because now, they see Christians as a threat. I think, do you remember the Newsmax report, for example, a couple months ago, uh, where uh, the Orthodox sect of the Netanyahu coalition government was, was trying to propose banning Christianity in the Holy Land. Now, you and I were, were good Bible scholars. So we're looking at this like, hey, we have a place there. <laughs> and, and all that man was doing, he was doing his job. That's his assigned position. His, his duty is to be in Jerusalem as a, a Roman Catholic abbot, and uh, he was going to the Western Wall, which and you probably know this, Bobby, because you're a man of history. It's not even the right wall. It's like <laughs> it's supposed to represent like the temple. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like a, it's an artificial uh, presentation. Jews go to it, some for politics, others uh, in, in, rem in remembrance of, of uh, the third, you know, the second temple. They want to build a, a third temple. And I don't think God blesses that. But in respect to that video, uh, that was uh, an example of one. I don't know if I would even have debated it. I do appreciate the, the professionalism of that uh, Roman Catholic official. Uh, I, I don't think he had anything to answer for. Okay, I think that he answers to God. He doesn't answer to Jewish officials who are asking him to cover up a cross because it offends them. Yeah, it's it's interesting that um, Israel shares, you know, it's Abrahamic, right? So it shares uh, the foundation of those three um, religions. And when, I mean, why can't, those people are apparently not allowed to go there anymore. It's basically the, the Jewish people are like, no, nah, this is my space. Nobody else is allowed in here. Please remove that. That cross, that's offensive. Thank you very much. And it's kind of insane. You know, um, let's let's go into the readings. I'm going to do the Old Testament. I was wondering if you could read the gospel. I uh, texted it sure. to you. Um, I'm going to do we'll do the Old Testament first, then the psalm and then. <clears throat> so, um, all right, a reading from the book of Exodus. Although Moses and Aaron performed various wonders in Pharaoh's presence, the Lord made Pharaoh obstinate and he would not let the children of Israel leave his land. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure it for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. 
You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. It shall not be eaten raw or boiled, but roasted whole with its head and shanks and inner organs. None of it must be kept beyond the next morning. Whatever is left over in the morning shall be burned up. This is how you are to eat it with your loins girt, sandals on your feet and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord, but the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, Psalm 116, the responsorial is, I will take the cup of salvation and call in the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call in the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious is the eyes of the Lord, is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. And now a reading from the gospel according to Matthew. Please take it away. Jesus was going through a field of grain on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, See, your disciples are doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath, the priests serving in the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned these innocent men, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Out Praise to you, Lord wow. Jesus Christ. And you know what? I I, I, I have to I have to tell you. Thank you so much for reading that. You have a great voice. Oh, thank you have you. a fantastic oh, voice. Hey, and I know you blessed me with it. You know, and you, I use it to uh, to try to give inspiration and information to people. You probably <laughs> so. heard, you probably hear this all the time. Um, and I would just like to, and this is something I say all the time. I just like to tell everybody before we do our little makeshift homily for the homies. Um, I like to say, <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not or, an ordained priest. I'm not a prophet. I'm, uh, just a person. I'm a podcaster. I'm a total scum. I'm a sinner. I'm not a saint at all, but, uh, I have done my research by going to mass quite frequently. I am the host who eats the host. Okay. So. You're, you, today in the homily, I'm thankful that I had the guidance of my priest because, yeah, I know uh, sometimes some, it, you know, it's, it's easy to, to misinterpret the Bible. You know, that's why I actually do. Um, I do respect the Catholic faith like that, where there's like a lot of people have been thinking about this one particular thing for like a long time, thousands of years, you know. But he said, he said this, the priest said this, and I thought we, we could have a little discussion about it and what our, what our interpretations of um, these readings were, Mr. Zoll. But uh, he said, do not worship the law. 
Worship the Lord. When you when you are children, when we are children, we need boundaries. Okay, I know that we have to be childlike, you know, and be Christians, but this is different. When we're child, when we're children, we need boundaries. But when we become adults, we have to move from have to to want to. And so we have to worship God because we want to do it. And we see the benefits of it. And when, I liked I liked I liked his interpretation of that, like how everything mm-hmm. comes together. You know, because you had uh, you had all these laws. The Old Testament has all these insane laws, right? It's like uh, t- on this day, the fourteenth day, kill this, and then put the blood here, and and then look to the look to the east, and then you know jump and do some jumping jacks or something like that. Blink three times, right? And then and then um, Jesus in the gospel, he's like, you know what? Uh, what are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Like he's w- they're with me. Right. They're with God. And it doesn't matter what day it is. Like the priest brought up being in Brooklyn. He was at it. He brought up, he was at an acidic Jewish um, household and they went to the apartment in Brooklyn for something. I don't know what he was doing. He was working or something like that. And he said, uh, it was Saturday and there was two, um, elevators, one elevator op- operated properly, goes up and down, whatever. The other one stopped at every floor as it went up and stopped at every floor on the way down because um, the Jewish people that live there can't, can't even touch the button to go down, right? I mean, he's like, that's absurd because that's like considered work on the Sabbath. So yeah, it's, it's very silly. Uh, take it away. Yes. What, you, what do you think? Well, well, the first thing is the structure. I, I definitely believe in structure. I mean, you, you as a Former or current proud boy, you know, you, you know, oh, I'm, 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 I'm former, former, former. So as a former proud boy, you know, structure is important. Structure brings effectiveness. Uh, structure uh, brings discipline. And uh, you're able to accomplish things more as a group with structure than you can um, as a, a wild motley band, you know, that's uh, that's roaming through the land like locusts. You know, that that would be uh, my example of, of an unorganized group, I think. But in, in Exodus, what that passage when we think about. So it's interesting. They had to have a certain uniform to, uh, to you know, to partake uh, in the Passover. So they have to have a staff. They had the staff in the hand. They have to be wearing underwear and pants. You know, it sounded like they have to wear some kind of something to gird their loins. And they have to wear sandals, right? And we would think that, okay, well, this is, what is this like? The This is the Passover uniform. Now, the way I see it, they have to live in is, flight. The Lord was trying to, to bring eat. order to them. You know, they yeah. were a very, very rebellious group. And and honestly, the, one of the lessons from the Old Testament when I read through it is, is man, the Jews were always rebelling. And and look, the people of the land, they, they were living however they wanted to live. Even God's people were not always listening to him. And I look at an example with uh, with Moses. With Moses, you know, he he goes up to the the mountaintop to to talk with the Lord and to be in the presence of the Lord. And he comes back down and they're worshiping a bull. Like, like, what are we doing? But that's that's the way we are. I mean, as you mentioned, we're all sinners, and we still have this. Um, we still have the seed that was planted uh, in us by uh, the devil, and the seed of doubt, the the seed of rebellion. Uh, it, it goes back to the garden, and that's why the gospel itself is such a beautiful thing because the redemption story will lead us eventually to the new garden, New Jerusalem, as it's described in the book Revelation. And in this garden where we finally get to walk with the Lord again, with our uh, sanctified body, we're restored, resurrected with him, we won't have this rebellious seed anymore. But up until that point, you and I walking here in 2023, we're walking among people uh, who it, it's baked into their their existence, to their, their flesh, to rebel. So structure gives us the ability to uh, to discipline ourselves against that rebellion. I, I say that's kind of what Exorcist is talking about. I think Jesus knew the, he knew the intent of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So when they were trying to, to you know, try to say your, your followers, we're reading from the book of Matthew here about, about them eating grain because they're hungry. He knew their intent. They didn't care about following the law. If they cared about the law, they'd know what the law actually said or what the prophets said before they killed them. OK, they would know. And it's it's a kind of a it's a LARP. It's a spiritual LARPing in a lot of regards for the the Orthodox uh, Jews, the Talmudic Jews. Uh, they said during the trial that uh, this man may very well be and is likely the son of God. But you know what? Because he's come against us or he's coming to 
just slew, you know, get rid of our power, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of dissipate our power. We're going to go with uh, we're going to go with the latter. We're going to kill him and we are going to continue to wait for a new Messiah. And they also said, remember, the crowd screamed, let his blood be in our hands. And you know what? That uh, that has been a generational curse on them. And to this day, uh, like they heckled Jesus, they heckle politicians, they heckle journalists, they heckle uh, activists, and they, of course, heckle priests like the man, uh, the abbot we just witnessed in Jerusalem, who is wearing a cross. Because to mm. them, that cross represents the rebellion and their uh, curse of the blood being on their hands. I agree. I agree with you. And uh, so they, they but, but here's how I put it. In the Old Testament, the Old Testament is all tell. Tell, tell, tell. I'll send this prophet. I'll send this prophet. Tell them, tell them. You know, people don't learn by telling, right? You know what they have to have? They have to have to be shown. Shown, not told. It's kind of like great writers. Great writers, when you read a great book, it's not telling you anything. It's showing you everything. It's painting the picture. It's not saying like, the guy was Italian. He said, look at the, uh, the uh, dark gentleman with the grease back hair speaking with a speaking with a new york accent okay do you understand like so anyway um god goes these 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 people these ai are dysfunctional because we're just god's ai these these guys are dysfunctional they're not able to whatever for whatever reason he bought he made us he needs us to be able to do the right thing almost like a computer program right to always do the will of him in those key moments, when we get up to the bureaucracy of heaven, right? We got to help out as cogs in the wheel in his bureaucracy up there. So this is a vetting process. And um, a lot of these Jewish people were losing the vetting process. They were not being vetted properly. They're vetting them and going, oh, yeah, these guys are going to hell. They're always choosing the wrong things. Let's teach them. I'll send down prophets. I'll send down my word, right? Tell them what to do. Tell them. Doesn't work. Oh, my God. I got to actually go. I got to go and show them right now. I got to take a little piece of me. Let me find a proper specimen, a, a godly woman. Okay, her, right? And then I'll send a piece of me where I'm 100% man, I'm 100% God, and I'll show them the right way to live. And hopefully that will work. And so we've had this oral tradition for the last 2,000 years. It's almost like oral tradition is the uh, ancient internet you know, he sent out all his people to tell everybody because he did all these crazy things and these miracles and he, he showed people. He, he raised people from the dead. He was like, listen, I'm, con con I'm trying to convince you here. And the Jewish people didn't get it still. There's a lot of leftovers. Some converted. A lot of people didn't. There's spiritually, they're not soul aware maybe. I don't know. But they've been eating in flight for 3,000 years, the joke, haha, of the, of the show, uh, which it says they have to keep their sandals on and they have to keep their staff in their hand. They got to eat like they're in flight on the Passover night. Uh, moving on from that, uh, let me do, okay, so I can go back into some worldly stuff because people are worldly, you know, and we're trying to fish for men, right? Mm. We're not trying to uh, preach to the choir. Uh, okay. So, mm, Oh, remember this? This is, I think we showed this on the last or the one before that. Okay. It's, it's blared out. So it's not uh porn pornographic, but the boxer who, who, uh, you know, flashed everybody. Actually, I didn't catch this story. So Did what, you catch this? this? Wait, you didn't catch this. Mm -mm. Hold on one second. I think I have it. Yeah, I might have commented on it. Uh, I, just, I have like sensitive images. Uh, they're blurred on my end. So maybe I commented on it. <laughs> but, Where, uh, uh, oh, yeah, that, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I actually, boom. Fans. Enzo.com. Judges by one rack. One judge by two clean racks. I've just had that feeling that if they're going to do anything, it's the cleanest shots of Daniela. But really has had it. Outstanding. Pow. Oh, God love her. So she, she flashed the crowd and the cameras after she won. Okay. Daniela Hemsley barred from boxing final after viral breast flashing moment. 
See, this, this is why they need to stay in the kitchen. That's why they need to be raising kids. <laughs> yes. Not be beating each other up in <laughs> rings for money. I know. Like she went she really went <laughs> she went with the energy, right? What would it I think she did. Yeah, I think she did. It's it's very silly to me. She she obviously is a very attractive young woman. She's very. And uh, well, she isn't that young. I don't know, but uh, I I would say this. Isn't it crazy in this modern age that an attractive woman, instead of, uh, you know, getting married, having like twenty kids, you know, being in charge of a huge household, being a godly woman, she's instead uh, chosen to uh, to panhandle uh, for shekels in a ring while someone's trying to punch her in the face. <sighs> yeah, I mean, clearly. Clearly, uh, th those were not helping uh, dissuade uh, the boxing gloves flying at her fist, you know, f fist to her face. Uh, I would say that this woman, uh, maybe she should be barred from boxing. I, I don't understand why women are boxing anyway. I, I, it, is, I, it becomes a form of softcore pornography. A lot, a lot of guys, they go to watch these boxing matches because it becomes like a, a wet T-shirt contest almost. And maybe they're hoping that what happened happened. But I'll tell you this, Bobby. Um, so one of my guys, uh, he's a bodybuilder. Okay, so I went down south near you, and I went to a bodybuilder competition. Never, never been to one of those ones before. But <laughs> probably won't go again, okay? Because he was he was in the guy part, right? The, they do the guy part first, where the guys go out and they like shim around and they they pose and. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, anyway, listen, I'm listen. I've, I, 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 I'm, I'm a Floridian. Editor. I should have been to one by now. Yeah, I don't I know why I haven't. Been. I should have invited the uh, the fat Enzo show out to help cover this. But this, <laughs> yeah. this is where I'm going with this. The guys won. The place was half full. You know, it's mainly family members supporting the the bodybuilders who they work hard. They they have to diet. They have to lift. They have about a six month block. And I mean, it's it's more of like you can't. Uh, you can't just walk into a bodybuilding competition to pay money and you know your results they show you're, that's why you're all old up and you're doing the prancing and stuff but here's the thing as soon as the guy competition was finished and my guy's off the stage and he's like hey good job the women come up and there was a line out of the hotel of guys of uh, i like to call them coomers guys who are like lascivious and a lustful mind and they're showing them just to watch bodybuilder women shaking around on stage it it is a um i wouldn't say it's socially acceptable but it's certainly it's a step above a strip club for a lot of guys and this is what i see with this boxing uh thing this boxing ex exhibition it's a step above a strip club guys were there because they're in the strip clubs and actually they wanted to see if this woman would fall over and her breasts fall out well they got it they got it it's no different than pornography should ban it. I, you know, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I know I said, um, Catholic men are, are not misogynistic as a joke, but the women right now are kind of shameless. They really are. I mean, I was just watching this thing. I think this is, uh, I got this from the Twitter, Elon's Twitter. Women used to be shamed for this type of behavior. Now it's celebrated. What happened? Let me watch this. Watch this really quick. This is crazy. Fatenzo.com. What's something that you never told her? <laughs> I f***ed your ex-boyfriend. Are you serious? What the f***? Like, this was supposed to be like a fun little interview. No, like, this is for real. <laughs> but why you do that on an interview, though? No, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't, Are you f***ing serious? These not... girls do not have any brain or loyalty. What is your craziest college confession? I Boyfriend's best friend just for fun. Just for fun. Oh, I f all of his friends just for fun. Yeah. I slept with cousin. I've cheated on two of my boyfriends. How many boyfriends have you had? Three. So damn near all of them. If Jesus can't save these hoes. Why are you trying? What is the worst thing an ex has done to you? Nothing, honestly. My ex has actually been really good to me. What's the worst thing you did to an ex? I cheated. Sensational. Because he accused me of cheating, so I decided I was actually gonna go do it. Who did you cheat with? A lot of people. How many people? Never cheated. Maybe four or five. Jesus Christ. He never found out. He I was, I was slick out. with it. I was slick. You were slick with it. Yeah, I got away with that. Outstanding. Pow. You know, um, we, I, I know. I, where are I know. the fathers at? Bobby, where are the fathers at? These girls need to be taken by their, their weaves. Taken by their weaves back home, okay? Here's what I want to say to this one. This is what I want to talk to you about. Because you hang out with, well, you know, Nick Fuentes, the infamous Nick Fuentes. And you have a, a show on his network, Cozy. Mm. And uh, you were present at his infamous 
uh, now deleted Hitler Youth esque speech. Well, West Palm Beach, right? I mean, rally uh, crew. let's just call for it as a lot I mean, of people I mean, try to say it's like, listen, Hitler this is what this is what this is what people say. This is, a, you know, <laughs> there's truth in jest, but it, it, it was it was very impressive. The you know, the, the screen on the back, uh, it was impressive. And, and, and I was there and I and I witnessed it. I witnessed the and I believe um, and I I side with him and understand a lot of his points and I. I totally get a lot of his points, even the ones on the Jewish end of it. Okay, I'm not going to shy away from it. Some of his, some of his points make perfect sense, like the uh, the Talmud, which is tradition. It's tradition after Jesus lived, right? And then because these people that were basically soul unaware kept on with it, kept going they were on with it. a little bit too. That's why they, they wrote I, such disgusting things about Jesus. Judaism I'm changed. Not, I'm not going to repeat them, but they, they said some really nasty and blasphemous Ju- things. Ju- Judaism changed. That's why they got changed. burned in front of uh, Notre Dame Cathedral yeah. in the uh, 13th century. Judaism changed with the times, and it shifted and, and it evolved for the people that, you know, so who they had to explain who this person was, this Christian, and all these Christian people that were around them. But, uh, I mean, I digress. The reason why I bring it up really is because this whole incel thing, right? Maybe you could explain that to me because these women right now are shameless, okay? They're absolutely shameless. This this generation, you know, uh, you said that you're married, so I know you don't have to deal with this, but being out on the dating market at this moment in time in life, it's it's hard for people, right? Because people don't have morals, you know? Yeah, so no, it this, seems so this like is an interesting question. I know that people come up with it, you know, and it's I'll and tell it's, you be- this, it's better just yeah. to say, forget it. I'm just not gonna. Yeah, I'm not well, gonna be with anybody until had, until somebody's I just had to address this because uh, we were going through the book of Matthew. And did you know? Did you know that the book of Matthew addresses this subject? There's actually three three uh, paths that Jesus laid out for men, especially young men, and it's uh, it's the path of the eunuchs. Okay, so uh, this is Matthew chapter 19, verse 12. And I'll, I'll read up. Uh, I'll read the gospel for us here. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, and there will be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. And this verse is interesting, and, and I would say that um, Nick, uh, Nick Fuentes, and and his uh, his followers, they are the the third. They are third. They have chosen to follow the path of uh, celibacy, uh, eunuch, you know, eunuch in the sense they're not having sex with women like we just saw on camera here who who apparently were raised in a manner where they don't see any shame in getting blacked or getting banged by 10, 12, a bunch of guys that aren't their husbands, certainly not their boyfriends. Uh, and here's the thing about it. Do I understand their position? You're you're a veteran in our ecosystem. So you remember Gamergate. You remember uh, the the fights uh, against uh, you know feminism that we fought uh, in in 2013, 14, 15. Do I understand why many men don't want to get married right now or pursuing this path that Jesus laid out, the third path, being a eunuch yeah. that wasn't either born that way or wasn't castrated? Right. Look at That's this. What I would see. Look at this. So POV, when you tell the, the cute guy at work that uh, you have a son and watch the light in his eyes die. <laughs> and underneath is just so funny, the comments. A man might actually consider taking on a woman with kids if she has daughters, but most men will never raise another man's son. Somebody responds, nah, most, most women who have daughters nowadays are BFFs with each other, tell each other everything and all that S, count me out. Somebody said, when I was younger, the propaganda about how noble it is to be a stepdad was thick. Most have seen through that. Somebody said, it's noble. It's a sacrifice that will almost certainly not be repaid, but that's the point. I'm not interested in sacrificing. Someone was like, agreed. Uh, Everyone I know who did it regretted it. So it's basically, here's what happens. So women go and they just have frivolously like have kids or whatever. And then like realize they're not happy because they're, they have kids out of wedlock or whatever. And maybe they divorced and then now they want to find a husband. And what are you offering them? Well, in respect to that, um, they're unhappy because they're out of submission. 
right? What they truly desire is a man that's going to support them, love them, uh, give them uh, the structure and the discipline uh, and the, uh, the security that Christ has laid out in marriage. Now, for those single mothers, the ones you're addressing here, it's a tough situation. I mean, Paul addressed it in the epistles. Uh, he told uh, those who have either lost their, uh, lost their loved ones uh, for whatever reason, or they've departed from them. Uh, and again, the, the, our faith says that uh, no divorce is valid other than a situation where someone's committed adultery or has, uh, is, is committed to turning their back on Christ. They've become not a Christian anymore, you know, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Those are the only two cases, not, well, I don't like his job, or, oh, I don't like the way he treats me sometimes at nighttime. Here's the thing with this. My job as a, as a Christian man is not to figure out how to make every woman in the world happy. All right? My job as a Christian man is to live a Christian life. Two, God gave me a wife. She's wonderful. God gave her to me as a virgin, and I love my wife, and it's beautiful. We're never going to divorce. We're going to be together till the day I, I draw my last breath. Okay, My job is to be a godly husband to her. In respect to what I'm looking at here, Oh, I, I grieve. I grieve because those women, the ones that are, they've got uh, a body count in the tens. They got a body count past one. They're already in trouble. But a body count in the tens and then they're, they're bragging about cheating uh, on, on their, their boyfriends. And, and on top of this, too, uh, that they're, they're talking about having sex with their friends, boyfriends and friends. I mean, it's, it's just uh, it's no different and then than they a have, Then they have right? kids, too. We used to get stuck with this stuff. Yeah. And then, but, but, but I understand why, why guys go, I'm opting out. Mm. I understand why. I think that, and I it's not too. just, I, mean, I don't you, even, you, you want your, you want your son, you got, you don't have any kids. So I don't have any kids. I'm, you want your son having to deal with this BS? I I'm mean, a little, I'm you, a little older. You and I don't and want I, to deal with it. You and I don't want to have to deal with these, these crazy women. I would never date a woman like that. Okay. Take it yeah, from I'm, my person. I'm not in my 20s anymore, yeah. you know? Yeah. But uh, it, that's the issue. It, it's a lesson. And I think the guys, they're, they're responding to these TikToks. They're seeing these TikToks and they're saying, okay, I see what women are capable of. <laughs> okay. I'm seeing, I'm seeing what women are unashamed about. So they're being so selective and, and in, in a good way. Because if we are to change uh, the culture and society, we don't have to ourselves uh, find a way to redeem and reset the lives of all these women. We right. do, however, have to live as a life that's an example to others. So we find the right woman, okay, to start a family with, and we do these things, and we take back control of the country, which is the other goal of the, of the rally and the America First Foundation that you, know, you witnessed. It, it's more about taking back control of the country and the country being run by Christian and Christian thought, right? And this is something we need more than other. I, I, I hate TikTok, honestly, scrolling through these things and Instagram, I'm barely on the platform because of the amount of, um, of thoughts and e-girls and uh, they're, they're traps, honestly, uh, Bobby. Many of these things are traps for men like us. You know, they, they try to lure us in. They're trying to get us caught in a bear trap. But see, the thing is, I, I love Jesus more than I love these hoes. So... That's where I'm at with it. Let, let's uh, let's let's um, go over the uh, saint of the day. Uh, probably somebody else who chose Jesus over hoes. I'd imagine Saint Lawrence of Brindisi. Saint Lawrence of Brindisi, the saint of the day for July 21st. At first glance, perhaps the most remarkable quality of Lawrence of Brindisi is his outstanding gift of languages. In addition to a thorough knowledge of his native Italian, he had complete reading and speaking ability in Latin, Hebrew, Greek, German, Bohemian, Spanish, and French. Lawrence was born on July 22nd, 1559, and died exactly 60 years later on his birthday in 1619. His parents, William and Elizabeth Russo, gave him the name of Julius Caesar, Cesar in Italian. After the early death of his parents, he was educated by his uncle and the College of St. Mark in Venice. When he was 16, he entered the Capuchin Franciscan order in Venice and received the name of Lawrence. He completed his studies of philosophy and theology at the university of Padua and was ordained a priest at 23 with his facility for languages. Lawrence was able to study the Bible in its original texts at the request of Pope Clement the eighth. He spent, much time preaching to the Jews in Italy. So excellent was his knowledge of Hebrew. The rabbis felt sure he was a Jew who had become a Christian. Lawrence's sensitivity to the needs of people, a character trait, perhaps unexpected in such a talent 
talented scholar began to surface. He was elected major superior of the Capuchin Franciscan province in Tuscany at the age of 31. He had the combination of brilliance, human compassion, and administrative skill needed to carry out his duties. In rapid succession, he was promoted by his fellow Capuchins and was elected Minister General of the Capuchins in 1602. In this position, he was responsible for great growth and geographical expansion of the order. Lawrence was appointed papal emissary and peacemaker, a job which took him to a number of foreign countries. An effort to achieve peace in his native kingdom of Naples took him on a journey to Lisbon to visit the king of Spain. Serious illness in Lisbon took his life in 1619. In 1956, the Capuchins completed a 15-volume edition of Lawrence's writings. Eleven of his of these 15 contain his sermons, each of which... Re- relies chiefly on spiritual quotations to illustrate his teaching and the reflection of his life, his constant devotion to scripture, coupled with great sensitivity to the needs of people present a lifestyle, which appeals to Christians today. Lawrence had a balance in his life that blended self-discipline with a keen appreciation for the needs of those whom he was called to serve. And I just think it was interesting because, you know, he died on his birthday. And so therefore his, uh, you know, usually, well, it actually got pushed. I guess we, sometimes they push it. Today's the 21st, so they're celebrating it a day earlier. But what uh, there's only three people in the Catholic um, saints who are celebrated on their actual birthdays, their actual mm-hmm. day that they were born on this earth, and that is John the Baptist, Jesus, and Mary. Other than that, all the other saints, they're celebrated on their day of death, really their birthday in heaven. And uh, that's interesting that now I, I can go, oh, yeah, there's actually four. It's this guy, St. Lawrence of Brindisi, who died That's on his birthday. Example. It's a great example to young men. Yeah, I think the, the example of, uh, of St. Lawrence, Lawrence of Brindisi is uh, one that I think many men uh, in this age want to follow. I, I remember from the rally, uh, the Francis rally too, uh, you heard um, a quoting of saints uh, from Nick. Uh, he was speaking a little bit about uh, what uh, we can Saint do. St. Moses make, uh, the Black. Yeah, St. Moses the Black. He quoted. Very interesting. You know, Nick is a, is a scholar of history and, of course, is, is very devout in his faith. And, and what he, he quoted there, I would say that um, Nick maybe is aware of uh, St. Lawrence of Bredisi. He's certainly aware of um, St. Moses the Black. Uh, in respect to this, the lessons we can learn from those saints is, uh, is something of great importance because I'd much rather learn lessons from these men than uh, some of the red pill manosphere or um, uh, thought uh, cattle herders, uh, as, as we see here, the, the men that, are, that uh, corral e-girls uh, for content and clicks. Uh, I'd much rather learn from the saints than I would uh, from these manosphere fellows. It's tough out there, Bobby. I mean, you don't have kids. I don't have kids. But I certainly have a lot of uh, people that I mentor in this respect. And the lesson I've learned is the next generation certainly feels abandoned. Uh, they we did abandon them to a certain degree more so the baby boomers not so much uh, millennials like you and i or gen xers but here's the thing they have gotten the least support and mentorship uh, both from the church and uh, from uh, the structures of governance and family uh, and a generation for for decades you know this this generation uh, was not only fatherless but we we gave them over to ipads and cell phones to raise them. And of course, that's why they've, they, they're these uh, subcults have formed on the internet, because in a lot of ways, the, the Generation Z, whoever they watched, you know, for their high school years, the formative years, that became like uh, maybe a version of their spiritual dad, you know, or, or in this sense, a, a cultural, societal dad, because we know that our spiritual father is the Lord. Uh, but this is this is a way to explain what's going on. I certainly appreciate you sharing that. St. Uh, Lawrence of Bredicia, I'm going to read a little bit about him after this. I've got a lot of guys who they like to read about the saints and, of course, for the example of life. Because, I don't know, the saints didn't have to deal with pornography, but they did have to deal with Jews who were spreading it, though. There were Jews that were printing porn onto paper and uh, were passing around uh, very disgusting literature. The Jews also uh, engaged in uh, money-changing practices and and other criminal activities. So I'm sure they dealt with that. And of course, they dealt with it with grace. It's funny, the rabbis thought the St. Lawrence of Bredisi was uh, Jewish because of his, his, uh, his ability to, to parse through the, the Old Testament text. But I'd say maybe the greatest example for us to follow is his, uh, his 
piety and the course is celibacy. It's, it's something it of a blessing fantastic. Here. Isn't it fantastic that we had him today, though, on our discussion, our podcast, because he really does have a lot to do with what we're talking about here. And, you know, you're right, though, about the Saints. The Saints are a great example. And it's just exactly what I was talking about um, with the New Testament. You know, the New Testament is all show. So uh, the Catholics kind of kept that tradition going with the Saints. Because there's these good people that you look at and you go, okay, show me how to live. Show me the right thing to do. And you can, you can uh, keep learning if you study the lives of these people. And they, they always confirm these saints, right, with like, there's, only, there's two ways I've discovered by studying the saints. Either um, they're a founder of an order, right, and they have like a big cult, Cult comes right from Catholicism. That's one of the requirements of becoming a saint. You have to have a huge cult, cult oh, of personality. A bunch of people, a bunch of people well, get around you. Your definition of cult are actually not uh, negative. Uh, I recently yeah. looked up the definition of a cult. The first definition, uh, Merriam-Webster, is certainly derogatory, but two and three are not, and it just means that you uh, you have a religious kind of focus on something. And and look. There I give him the soundbite, but I will say that I definitely have a focus on Jesus Christ. So call me what you want, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but he had a cult too. He was the he was the Capo de Santi. Mm. He was the original saint. He's but a saint a saint uh, in the Catholic Church just means that you are confirmed to be in heaven. So mm. these are this is a soul that's in heaven, and we could tell by like a lot of times it's that the, if they found something or they're a great communicator uh better i mean uh, of course orator when they're alive but they left writings and you could examine and be like wow this guy was very holy right um another thing that you that you did though i wanted to mention this you were a producer on died suddenly yes yes i, I was I, a producer on that last year and i didn't want to bring it up because it's scary to even bring it up because they just they constantly write youtube and all these other they, they just give you a million strikes strike one strike two strike three for even bringing anything up that's you know the v related right well certainly they there's a hesitation uh to even stole platform that content i i have a i'm a mixed kind of batch with it what i would say is they're so angry that we won and we did win. I don't get so beaten up about the censorship anymore because we beat them. The, the shots themselves are expiring on the shelves. And uh, the Vs, the Vs, uh, well, you know what? They, they've been proven to harm. Uh, so certainly many people decided not to get their yearly or quarterly or monthly booster uh, that was being advised to them. And we beat them by showing what it was doing inside people. Uh, the directors, uh, Matthew Scow and Nicholas Stumphauser, did an amazing job. It certainly was a, an act of God in that sense. So when we were producing it, you know, it was at a time that many people were, were debating whether they wanted to get the booster so they could see their family at uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas or avoid it and potentially lose their job, uh, face the, uh, the side effects of uh, both the physical poison that they were, they were being injected with and two, the side effect of, of resisting a system. Uh, it could have been firing, could have been expulsion from a school, could have been removal from the military. Those who took a stand though, Bobby, uh, we, we made the film for them. We made the film for them. We also made it for those that uh, were, were caught up in the matrix. They, they couldn't break out their mind from this notion that the government has lied to them and the government did not do the safety tests and things. You were the experiment. Everyone who took the shot was the experiment. But that movie, that movie has been credited correctly as ending the military mandates and, of course, the mandates at large. You and I today can walk around, not just in Florida, but anywhere in the country because of that movie. And all it did was show the huge white fibrous clots were, were forming in vaccinated people. We found them in, in uh, the, uh, the corpse of a vaccinated individual. And two, it exposed the Malthusian mindset, which is to depopulate because the world is too full. You know, the truth with that, Bobby, every single human being in the world can fit in Jacksonville, Florida. You're not going to have a lot of space. But all 7 billion people can fit in one city in our little state. Whoa. That's how great the world is. I can't, listen, I, we went from, we went from the topic of anti-Semitism and we went into this topic of, these are totally crazy topics that, you know, big tech, some guy sitting in a back room at Google, they love pushing the button on. And then we go right back into anti-Semitism. Could you believe that? I mean, come on. <laughs> 
There's another well, thing that you, Jr. this is, oh, yeah, this is something you, you also tweeted on <laughs> that I thought, you know, I thought it was interesting. I, I watched this, uh, this video, right. That, uh, the RFK junior video, um, I didn't see the one where there was a fart, but uh, Patty from Boston told me about that. Uh, apparently, he was discussing um, how some of these Vs are created to ethnically target whites and blacks, but avoid Ashkenazi Jews. Is that right? I would say that uh, RFK Jr., uh, he's got quite a resume. He's the man. I, I love he him. He is as bold enough to make a claim that both... Ashkenazi Jews and ethnic Chinese, because the New York Post, um, they, they did they did RFK Jr. a little dirty. They didn't shoot him at Daily Plaza, but they suddenly shot him digitally through their outlet in this respect. He was speaking to the, the notion that for some time and in Israel, weapons have been developed and have been pursued that would target individuals and groups based on ethnicity. ethnic bioweapons. That's what they're called. There was one in uh, South Africa during the apartheid era called a Kaffa killer. Now, Kaffa is South African for the N-word, okay? So it was a, a way to maybe cull and reduce the fertility of Afrikaans, uh, Africans rather, not Afrikaans. Afrikaans were the, the somewhat based uh, Dutch that fought the British during the Boer Wars. But the Africans um, were at risk of being depopulated through an ethnic bioweapon. Now, RFK Jr. is referencing that, and that weapon, by the way, was being produced in Israel back during the apartheid era. The second thing he's referencing is a very real program out of San Antonio, the U.S. Army. They put out a, uh, an, a kind of a, a call for samples of ethnic Russians. And this was about 2018, 2019. You might be able to find a show. Patty might be able to help you find this too. I did a story on this because it was, it was very shocking to me. Uh, the U.S. government was trying to develop a bioweapon, according to uh, what we're seeing here. They were trying to go through a U.S. government website to get samples from ethnic Russians so they could figure out how to create uh, something that maybe could harm an ethnic Russian. Instead said that Caucasian, as Balkan Caucasian is, is the terminology that was on the, uh, on the, on the actual uh, next gov kind of a gov uh, contract uh, proposal. But here's the thing. When RFK Jr. says something like this at a dinner, he's not just speaking off cuff. He's not just being, uh, uh, you know, ignorantly anti-Semitic. What he is doing, however, is as a man of history, a, a student of, of the sciences, and, and a man who himself uh, has experienced death and assassination in his life, uh, whether it be his father or his uh, uncle. All right. He, he's a smart man. And when he addressed this, I took it seriously. I think he, he was speaking about something that could be very truthful. Not something that uh, becomes toilet humor like the farts that they were talking about, but rather the hot air that was spoken here might have been that he was exposing that this wasn't just a bioweapon, but also one that was used to maybe uh, uh, keep a certain group safe, whether it be the Chinese, which some say produced the bioweapon out of Wuhan, or the ethnic uh, Jews, the Ashkenazi Jews, who, uh, if you remember, didn't they reach like 100% vaccination rate, but we didn't see the death rate, which would accompany that if the died suddenly premise is correct maybe it's because the shots uh, the boosters or maybe COVID itself wasn't engineered to kill them but rather kill you and i wow we gotta take our tinfoil hats off who knows who knows what if this can be true or not who knows i listen i i want to let me okay i know it's been an hour already so let's start winding down the show a little bit here i do want to do our latin of the day i wanted to talk about the latin word of the day um let me get that queued up here we go at enzo.com it's time for the latin word of the day Woo! all right the latin word of the day For July 21st. It's Fuga. Fuga. You know what Fuga means? Fuga means flight. Flight. Yeah, it means flight. Like the Jews, they've been eating in flight for, th you know, 3,000 years. <laughs> flight, route, escape, avoidance, avoiding, running away, right? Flight. So original, what is the what is the origin of the word fuga? Borrowed from French fugu, from Italian fuga, flight, ardor, from Latin fuga, act of fleeing, from fugio, 
to flee. Then, then I was thinking about the words, right? For centri- centrifugal force, right? Centrifugal force. You've heard that, right? Yeah. F M. So here's the, the like form- vaccines, by the way. Yes, it is. What is the centrifugal force in simple tombs? Centrifugal force is apparent outward force of mass when it is rotated. Think of a ball on the end of a string that is being twirled around or the outward motion you feel when turning a curve in a car. And in an inertial frame, there is an outward acceleration fleeing since the system is not rotating, right? So your like innards are fuga fleeing. Say the spinning ball, right? Or the the orbit of the Earth, supposedly, whatever. Flat Earth, baby. Firmament on top, baby. Are you a flat Earth, Bobby? I mean, some of the stuff they say is definitely, you know, I mean, I definitely know the moon landings were fake. What about the centrifuge? The centrifuge, right? Like you were talking about. That's how they come up with, that's how they come up with the Vs. And then one other word that's very similar to this is fugitivus. And you know what that word is? It is the fugitive. <laughs> fugitive, <laughs> because because what's the fugitive doing? The fugitive's fleeing, right? A person such as a suspect fleeing. witness or defendant involved in a criminal case who tries to elude law enforcement, especially by fleeing the jurisdiction. Called also a fugitive from justice. Something elusive or hard to find, right? Can I share some uh, Latin? Uh, there, there's a yes, Latin sir. Word. One second. One, one, one more thing to one more thing to show is the refugees. Oh, refugees. Okay, that's, that's the last. That's the last <laughs> word that I wanted to share. A person who has been forced to leave the country in order to escape war, persecution, or natural disaster. Refugees. So now, just we can see the F U G in all these English because you never, you know, Latin, the Latin peoples, and the Catholics. You know, you could say what you want. You could say the. Uh, the West is the best, but you got to give up to the Catholics because they were the ones who spread Western civilization all throughout the world. Yes, they and did. You could, and you could hear it throughout all of the uh, Western languages, including English, which is German plus Latin. Okay, Mr. Zoll, what was the Latin word you'd like to so share? So what I have is actually is a, a necklace was sent to me by a groiper, hardwood groiper. You can find him on Telegram. It says, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a sinner. So I've been practicing this. I got a I got a good recording for you. Okay, so this is is what whatever I, what I wear around my neck. Domine Jesu Christe, fille de miserere me peccatores. Yep, I love it. Don't worry. I, I had to play the recording because I might I might mess it up. And, way, and nomine patris et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. Yeah, Amen. yeah. I love learning the Latin. The Latin is is beautiful. And then as you know, if you. I would love to have you on again, you know, because you're such a good, I, I mean, I have so many things that we could talk about. I would love to talk to you more, man. I mean, you know, if you could ever come on again, please let me know anytime. Sure. I would really appreciate because we could just sit here and nerd out, I bet. Well, uh, you're so also many... welcome to, to join me on my morning Bible study too, if you'd like. Oh so my God, I would love to. I'd be honored to. Sure. I'd yeah. really appreciate just it. Let me know. It's 7.15 a.m. Eastern, all right? And you just have to sing the hymns by yourself. You know, we, we do have a musician and we try to encourage people to praise the Lord because a lot of people, they're very bashful, Bobby. They're like, I don't know, man, I don't be embarrassed. The Lord loves when we praise him. So I, yeah, you're more than welcome to join us in the morning whenever you're up and around. Thank you very much. And then let me do uh, the Fulton Sheen of the day. This is the, the wisdom of Fulton Sheen. With the energy of Charlie Sheen. That's all I want. I have one speed. I have one ear. Go over to You can never be commanded, for example, to like pickles. Heart. You know how face we are. Outstanding. I'm too smart. I'm too smart. I love pickles. That's my brain. That's happy. The wisdom of Fulton Sheen. Fulton Sheen. Bishop Fulton Sheen. He was the Catholic Johnny Carson. Uh, July 21st. You won't. Perfect life. You want perfect life and perfect truth and perfect love. Nothing short of the infinite satisfies you. And to ask you to be satisfied with less would be to destroy your nature. What do you want life, truth, and love unless you were made for them? How could you enjoy the fractions unless there were a whole? Um, okay, I guess the, the the imperfect goes right along to make it perfect, right? We just got to be uh, happy with where we are and what's going on in our lives. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bloom where you're planted. 
You know Amen. what I'm saying? Amen. Let Amen. me do the, uh, and then the, the last thing is the meditation of the day. Meditation of the day. Written by St. Lawrence of Brindisi, who died 19, in 1619. He was the minister general of the Capuchin Franciscans. Preached throughout Europe. Doctor of the church. This is from Sunday Sermons, and it's entitled, Hungering for the Love of the Lord of All. The greatest longing in the spirit of man is the hunger for love. A wife looks for love from her husband, a child from its father, a servant from his master, the poor from the rich. All people hope for the favor and love of the great ones of this world and the whole world rejoices and delights in their goodwill. And so every spirit must rejoice and every heart exult and be immersed in infinite joy. When we hear God so loved the world that he gave his only son. If we desire the love of important people and take delight in their good graces, God is the supreme Lord of all, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the King of infinite power, wisdom, and goodness, and generosity. Christ, moreover, the infallible truth, assures us that this supreme Lord loves us with a love so great that it cannot be put into words. The cherubim is glory in the holy of holies and God's temple gaze, as if lost in wonder, it is a sign that even to the minds of angels, the divine nature is worthy of admiration. God is an astounding substance, for he is not dependent on anything else for existence and is eternal and infinite. And as God's essence is, so also is his every attribute, power, wisdom, goodness. God's power, wisdom, and goodness are truly remarkable and beyond comprehension. But it seems to me the most incomprehensible of all God's attributes is his love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It comes as no surprise that God loves. For God, God love is necessity so that it is impossible for God not to love. As impossible as it, it is for him not to be, for God is love. As impossible as it would be for the sun not to be filled with light and for fire not to be hot. So impossible it would be for God to be without love. God is light and a consuming fire, the light of intelligence and the fire of love. It is as necessary to find love in God as it is to find power, wisdom, and goodness. In the most brilliant sun, we discover every decree of light, and in the hottest fire, every decree of heat. So in God, most perfect by nature, is found every degree of perfection that can be found here and there in creatures. Love, moreover, is the most desirable perfection, and consequently, all things aspire to love and hunger for love. Amen. Now, I do want to say, uh, before we depart, I would like to do, can we do a prayer to end the show? Sure. And um, in our pre-prayer, we're going to ask for St. Lawrence of Brindisi to, of course, pray for us. And then we're going to do our, uh, we'll do our Catholic prayer of the day, but we'll take into account, of course, our guest, Edward Zoll. Enzo.com. It's time for the Catholic Prayer of the Day. Very professional, Patty. Good job on the soundbite. And dude. now for some completely fictional bullshit. <laughs> Stick to the credo, Patty. Stick to the credo. Outstanding. Pow! And no many potteries at Philly at Spiritus Sancti. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for life. Thank you for love. Thank you for listening. Thank you for letting me podcast with Edward Zoll today. Having him on the show. Really, really appreciate him, um, what he's doing. With all his different projects, he's the man. Lord, please just stay with him and uh, keep moving through his life. And please, Lord, keep moving through the lives of everybody, all of us godless swine here left over in this world, in this vetting process. You know, let us not be like the Jews. Let us be soul aware truly and accept your son, Jesus Christ, in our hearts as our personal savior and become born again like the Protestants like to say, you know. And I, I pray for Every soul within God's green globe or flat surface with firmament on top. I'm not particularly familiar with the shape of the earth, nor do I really care. I just pray for all its inhabitants here. And, and I have special intentions today. You know, I just like to sum up the show and, and pray for our enemies. Offer some special intentions for, um, what is, what was her name? Daniela Hensley. One sec. Daniela Hensley, the boxing bre uh, breasted booby flasher that uh, she realizes that that's not the way to the Lord. She accept, accepts Jesus into her heart. 
and uh, starts living the right way. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For um, everybody who was affected by the V and for those who watched, died suddenly and were, you know, warned in time or everybody who worked on that project that God stays with them, moves through their lives, right? And then just it just watches over them because I know that they, they, they did a lot. They put a lot on the line creating a film such as that. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the German abbot that we were showing and for every all these people that are of other faiths other than judaism who want to enjoy israel too let them be you know invited and and let these let these jewish people realize that they have to share you know certain areas with others okay let them let them actually i pray for the conversion of all the jews we pray lord hear our prayer for rfk jr that he keeps doing the lord's work And saying the truth, regardless of if it sounds crazy, whatever, who cares? We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And uh, Mr. Zal, do you have any special intentions? Uh, If you can, can you pray for um, individuals who are going through custody battles, um, babies that have been born and are to be born soon from our team? And um, uh, lastly, a special prayer for one of our teammates uh, going through a, a very serious family matter if you wouldn't mind, uh, quitting in the prayer. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, and then I'll just be quiet for a second so you can offer your intentions home from the silence of your hearts. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, please hear these prayers that we offer for the souls of the sick who are in desperate need of physician. May they accept your son, Jesus Christ, in their hearts as their personal Savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Um, The podcast is ended. You guys can go in peace to love and serve the Lord and be outstanding. Outstanding. Pow. To each other. All right. Oh, Thank you. Damn, this is Friday. Crazy. Oh, my God. You bad, guys got to enjoy so your, bad, your weekend. Bad, Don't be too bad, much of so scums bad, out bad, there. Bad, All right. Listen, listen. I would love it if you would... Man, would you please shop this show to the Cozy family? I would love to be on there. I think that this show would benefit those guys. And I would not be an Ethan Ralph. I swear I wouldn't be another Ethan Ralph. I'd be be thankful. And I apologize for for anything I said in in jest about calling um, Nick Fuentes to rally a Hitler-esque speech. I was simply being uh, sarcastic there. I just want you to know that, Mr. Zoll. I appreciate you, and I, I'm sure it was all done in, uh, in good, good intention. Uh, as, as for Cozy, I don't control the platform, but uh, I still have a channel. Maybe you can put in a good ear for me. I, if, if you want to want to um, follow Mr. Zoll, there you go. Again, follow him on Twitter. Watch Crosstalk News. You can check out his Bible study on Cozy every weekday at 7.15 a.m. Appreciate you. And then let me just finish with the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust in all Satan and all his evil spirits to prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Outstanding. Pow!